Well, good morning, Gab TV, Rumble, Facebook, YouTube, family and friends. This message is a message for uh, Layla's Quinceanera, and it has such an important uh, lesson in it for all of us. I wanted to uh, give this message uh, as a church service since we had to cancel last Sunday. So anyway, a quinceanera is, uh, of course, uh, quince meaning 15. It's a 15-year-old young woman's birthday party that commemorates her coming out as a woman uh, into the world. But more importantly, it commemorates her life uh, in relationship with God. And so uh, this is a a recreation of Layla's Quinceanera. So before we start, I'd like to uh, uh, give you a few uh, dad jokes. And the first one is, why are fences around cemeteries? And if you don't know, it's because people are dying to get in. And here's the next one. How did Dar Darth Vader know what his son Luke gave him for Christmas? Are you ready? He felt his presence. I don't know, maybe these aren't too funny, but anyway, did you know that the first french fries were not cooked in France? You wanna know where they were? They were cooked in Greece. And the last one, and thankfully the last one, why are colds bad criminals? Because they are easy to catch. Well, anyway, Greetings to all. Thank you, Michael and Esmeralda, for inviting us to Layla's Quinceanera. It is a privilege, a blessing, and an honor to open the ceremony of Layla's Quinceanera with the Word of God. Because of Layla's youth, God has a special message for her and her court. However, it also has great significance for us, for all of us. In, in Matthew 7, Yahweh God teaches us a parable which talks about the building of a house on two types of foundations. This parable, although it talks about houses, it is really referencing the building of our lives. The building of our house on sand. In Matthew 7, 26-27, Everyone who hears these sayings of mine, teaching of all of God's words, and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on sand. And the rain descended, the floods came, the winds blew and beat on that house, and it fell, and great was its fall. Now we know if we build our house on a faulty foundation like sand, that that house will eventually be destroyed. Jesus is saying if we build our lives on any foundation other than on him, our lives will be destroyed. Building our house on the rock in Matthew 7, 24 and 25, it says, Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine, the teaching of all of God's word, and does them, I will like him to to a wise man or a woman or a young person who built his house or his life on the rock. And the rain descended, the floods came, the winds blew, and beat on the house, but it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. Now in life, there are only two foundations we can build our lives on. We can build our lives on Jesus or we can build our lives on anything or anyone else. There's only two foundations. Earlier in chapter 7 of Matthew, he talks about two roads. There's only two roads to take in this world, although it seems like there's many. There's really only two. There's the wide road of destruction that many are in, that many go in thereby, and they will lead to destruction. But then there's a narrow road, and difficult is the way and narrow is the way, and few be there that find it. I pray you become one of those who find the narrow, straight road in Christ. So, 
We are all born into a house or a life whose foundation is built on sand. We are all born with a wrong foundation. Why, you might ask? We ask because we were born with a sin nature. Our lives are built on sand. And if we continue to live and build our lives on this sand or sin nature, we will fall into destruction and this destruction will be eternal. You might be thinking, I thought this was a quinceanera, a, a happy time, a birthday party where we all laugh and have fun. Well, we're getting to that part soon. Amen? First of all, we must do some business with Yahweh God. We want everyone here to have a chance to be right with Yahweh God before it's eternally too late. In looking at the life built on our sin nature, we build it on what others think I am or even what I think I am. This leads us to a very rocky foundation of trying to get people to love and accept us, which does not always work well. Again, this is the, 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 rock, the foundation that is built on sand. It's not rocks, it's sand. Another part of this disastrous sand foundation is what others have done to me to hurt me and what I have done to hurt others. Many of us suffer from what sinful things others have done to us, causing us hurt and anguish, which we may have a difficult time in getting over. We then develop what is known as PTSD, or post-traumatic stress disorder, which can haunt us all of our lives. Sometimes we have hurt others, and the regret that we have haunts us and causes us again deep anguish as well. Another part of this disastrous sand foundation is what Satan thinks of me and what he accuses us of and his temptations for us to sin more and to continue to build our lives on sand. He wants us to build our lives on anything or anyone except Jesus. We will never have God's joy building our lives on this corrupted foundation of sand. And we will end up having a wasted life. And without total repentance, we will end up in a devil's hell. So how do we get out of this eternal dilemma? How do we build our lives on the rock, the foundation of Christ? What do we do what the scripture says, which is to hear the sayings of Jesus and do them? Can anyone tell me who was speaking in those two verses in Matthew 7? Jesus, of course. Now, we must build our lives on Jesus Christ. The only way to forgiveness, the only way to heaven. Because Jesus is the rock foundation we need to build our lives on. So how do we build our lives on Jesus? Well, in Mark 8, 34 to 36, in the New King James, when Jesus had called the people to himself with his disciples also, he said to them, whoever desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Now, brothers and sisters, many times we hear we have to uh, build up our self-esteem, build up our self-love, We've got to get our, uh, get our share. But that's not what Jesus says. Jesus says we must deny ourselves, deny our flesh. And to take up our cross means to die to our ambitions, our desires, our hopes and our dreams and follow Jesus, follow him, his desires, his uh, uh, achievements that he wants us to, to do for who. And he goes on to say, for whoever desires to save his life by building it on, on what you want, what we want, the flesh, we, we will lose it. But, he says, whoever loses his life for my sake, for Jesus' sake, for his goals, for his accomplishments, for his achievements, and the Gospels, will save it. For what would it profit a man if he gains the whole world but loses his own soul. Now, in 1 Timothy 2, 5 and 6, in the Amplified Version, it says, For there is only one God and only one mediator 
between God and mankind, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom, as a substitutionary sacrifice to atone for all of our sin. And the testimony was given at the right and proper time. Because Jesus is Yahweh God, he is able to represent God to us. Because Jesus is a man, he is able to represent represent us to God. Jesus is the only one qualified to be the redeemer of all of mankind. In fact, Jesus is the only one qualified to hear our prayers. Jesus is also the only one qualified to forgive our sins. No one else can forgive you of your sins. No one else can even hear your prayers. Only Jesus. That's why in John 14, 6, Jesus states with great authority, Jesus said to him and to us, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. And no one, no one comes to the Father except through me. Our prayers cannot go through anyone but Jesus. You have to go directly to Jesus. And he is willing and able and to hear your prayer. So again, how do we build our lives on Jesus the rock? Well, Jesus told Nicodemus how to be saved how to build our lives on him. Jesus said, all of you, all of you must be born again. We must give our entire lives to Jesus and ask Jesus to give us a born again, saving faith in him and him alone. No church, no pastor, no pope, no priest, no one can save you. No one can give you that faith. It has to be Jesus. You and I must become new creations by God. We must become new, spiritually born again people. Does this message stir your heart and mind? Do you want to build your life on Jesus and only Jesus? If you do, your life will change. It will change and if you're being honest with God, and if you are willing to give the entirety of the rest of your life to Him, if you do, the Holy Spirit will cause you to be born again, and, will, and your life will change drastically. Your life will not be based on what you or others think of you, but what God thinks of you. And it, it will not be what Satan says you are, but what God says you are. Your identity will be in Christ and not in your old sin nature, which is your flesh. You will have a deep, abiding relationship with God himself. Your concept of who God is will change and your mind will be filled with the knowledge of God, his word, and his love. You'll be filled with supernatural love. The, this is called the fruit of the Spirit. Supernatural love, joy, peace, patience, gentleness, meekness, goodness, faith, and godly self-control, no matter what circumstances you face. Does anyone want this supernatural love in their lives? I pray you do. I know I do. It comes to those who are building their lives on the rock, on Jesus. Amen. In Deuteronomy 30, verses 15 through 18a, in the New King James, God is saying to Layla, her parents, Mike and Esmeralda, to all of her court, and to all you precious people, God says, See, I have set before you today life and good, death and evil, in that I command you today to love the Lord your God, to walk in His ways, to keep His commandments, His statutes, His judgments, that you may live and multiply, and the Lord your God will bless you in the land which you go to possess. But if your heart turns away so that you do not hear and are drawn away and you worship other gods and serve them, I announce to you today that you shall surely perish. Now he was speaking this to Israel as a nation, but he's speaking it to all people. There's only two foundations so let us see what foundation we are on. We're going to take a test. We're going to take a test of where we stand with Yahweh God. And that test is the Ten Commandments. Now, don't be ashamed. Raise your hand. 
How many of you have lied? Raise your hand. What does that make you? What does that make us? It makes us liars. How many of you have stolen anything? Raise your hand. What does that make us? Thieves. Now, how many of you have looked at someone with lust? What does that make us? Adulterers at heart. How many of you have used the Lord's name in vain? Which means as a curse word. Now, let me ask you, would you use your mother's name as a curse word? Of course you wouldn't because that would bring dishonor to her. So why do we do it with God? What does, what does this make us? Well, to use God's, word, God's name as a curse word is a, is a blasphemer. And, it's, and it's, very, uh, it's a very evil thing to do. So if you and I stand before the Lord right now, you and I are liars, thieves, adulterers, and blasphemers at heart. Are you and I guilty or innocent? Heaven or hell? So we have two choices, and only two choices. We can rely on, our, on ourselves or some false faith, or we can understand what Jesus did for us. This is why Jesus went to the cross, to pay the penalty of our sins. So if for example, if you are in a court of law and you have a large number of speeding tickets and someone pays your fine, the judge can legally let you go because justice has been served. This is exactly what Jesus did for us because he loves us and he, he paid the price so that God the Father would remove his wrath from us. Now, as an example of this choice, we are all faced with is like being in an airplane that is about ready to crash. Now, we can jump out of the plane and flap our arms to save ourselves, or we can put on the Lord Jesus, who is our parachute. Jesus paid that fine for us. Jesus is the only way to parachute to heaven. Jesus is the only way that we can be forgiven of all of our sin. Otherwise, our sin drags us into a devil's hell. In Romans 13 and 14, in the New King James, it says, But put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lust. What will you do? Will you continue to build your life on sand? Or will you pray right now and ask Jesus for a born-again saving faith in Him? Will you repent of all your sins and ask Jesus for forgiveness? Would you ask Jesus to cleanse you with his shed blood as atonement for your sins? <coughs> Excuse me. So in conclusion, would you please raise your hand if you're being prompted by the Holy Spirit to ask for a born-again faith in Jesus and forgiveness of all your sins through the repentance of them and to turn from sin and turn to Jesus by faith. Will you pray with me out loud? Will you, will you ask Jesus to save you right now? Pray with me out loud. Do not be ashamed. Say, Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you, dear Father, asking you to forgive us of our sins. We, I ask you, Jesus, to save me from my sin and to give me a born-again saving faith in you. I want to turn from my sin. I want to turn away from my sin nature, and I want to build my life on you, Jesus Please, dear God, please, dear Jesus, come into my heart and life and make me brand new from the inside out. Thank you for hearing my prayer, and I pray, dear God, that I will be encouraged to, to walk in your power and your strength and your love and your joy and your peace by the power of your mighty spirit. Please come into my heart and life and change me and forgive me of my sins. And I ask this and pray this in the most wonderful name, the most powerful name. I pray this in Jesus' name. Well, Layla, Mike, and Esmeralda, and Layla's court, and all you precious people, please do not reject Jesus by building your lives on any other foundation than the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you. May you go in peace. May the Lord bless you, keep you, and may his face shine upon you. And we'll see you next week.